Hello again. Today we'll be looking at the normal distribution. I will take a look at this in three or four small parts. The first part is looking at just the basic ideas of the normal distribution. Most of you may have seen this normal distribution before. It's one of the most useful distributions. It's a continuous distribution. <clears throat> we'll take a look at understanding the basic properties of the normal distribution, taking a look at how to get probabilities from the tables as well as from R. So both are important because in exams, of course, we won't have R. Um, taking a look at then sums of normal random variables, and then solving problems using just the individual normal random variables and then sums of random variables. So, first of all, basic idea is this. The normal distribution is a very important continuous distribution. It has two parameters, the mean and the variance, and both of these need to be specified or you must be able to obtain them in some way before you can work with this distribution. So the not notation we use is, we say a random variable x here, this n stands for normal, and the mu is specified, and the variance. So note very carefully, it's the variance here that's specified and not the standard deviation. In the end, we do more work with the standard deviation, but the notation we're going to use is using variance there. Now, we know that if I then scale this in some way, if I put y as something, a constant a times x plus b, then the mean of y is scales in the same way, so it's a times the mean mu plus b. The variance is scaling only by the a and a squared, so it becomes a squared variance, a squared sigma squared. And so, in this situation, the normal is a special distribution because then y also has a normal distribution and the mean is as we worked out a mu plus b and the variance is a squared sigma squared this is not usual for uh, distributions you can see clearly if i take a look at a binomial and scale that multiply everything by two then what i get is no longer binomial because to start off with if i would binomial say with uh, binomial let's make it simple two and point five then the values of this takes is 0, 1, 2. If I multiply this whole thing by 2, now it takes values 0, 2, 4, and that can't be binomial anymore. So it doesn't work always with distributions. Normal makes this uh, happen, and that's why this is so special. Another aspect, another particular thing we'll look at very often with normal distributions is this idea of standardization. So the way it works is, if I take a look at a normal random variable, if I have x is normal and the mean is mu and the variance is sigma squared, if I subtract the mean and divide by the sigma, we know what I'm going to get from here is z, which will have mean 0 and variance 1. So I have standardized this. And so also, because the mean is 0 and variance is 1, and we know that scaling in this way leads us back to normal distributions, that means z is now a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. We call this the standard normal distribution. And in fact, if I start with a standard normal distribution and I scale the thing in this way, then what I've done is I've shifted the mean and I've multiplied by the sigma. What I'll get is then the mean of x is going to be mu. z has mean 0, so that doesn't come into it. And the variance of x is, that's a constant, Right, and so all I get is sigma squared variance of z, and z has variance 1, so sigma squared. I get x is normal mu sigma squared. Look at this slide carefully afterwards and make sure you understand the basic ideas behind this. So I can scale back and forth. I can take something that's normal mu sigma squared and get normal node 1 out of this, and I can get something that's normal node 1 and scale it to get mu sig normal mu sigma squared out of that. This is a very important aspect of normal distributions. So the way the changing of the mean and the variance affects what the distribution looks like is given in this slide over here. So I've got here a sketch of normal distributions with different means and different variances. So you can see here what I've got is the first one is just normal with mean 0 and variance or standard deviation 1, normal not 1. And then I shift the mean to 4. So the mean shifts, but the shape's exactly the same. I have maintained the standard deviation, standard deviation. So this is this is the, the blue curve there. So this one here is normal node 1. This is again normal, but the mean here is now 4. The variance remains to be 1. 
So the mean has shifted to 4. What is this red one here? Is now normal. I've maintained the mean at 0, but I've changed the standard deviation to 4. So variance is 4 squared. So you can see here, this still is centered around 0, but it, it has a much larger spread. So this is how the distribution changes in location and shape if I change the mean and variance. Distribution tables. So normal distribution tables are very commonly used, even now, even with computers, uh, especially when we have to test things in exams. So you have tables available online, and there are various sorts of tables available online. And the one we look at is, this is normal node 1 distribution, so the shape looks like that. Now it's very important when you're working with the normal distribution to sketch this out, because then you'll be able to see exactly what you're looking for. So here's a value of z. And there are various kinds of tables. Now we know the probabilities are given by areas under the curve, normal distribution curve in this case. So this little bit here is what the table will list, and that is the probability that the normal random variable z lies between 0 and this number small z. Now, by symmetry, the whole probability here should be equal to 1 under the curve. So below 0 will be 0.5. So that bit here is 0.5. And above 0 is also 0.5. So this bit here remains as 0.5 minus this probability here. Let me call this P. So by having this little bit here, and by using the symmetry of the curve, and the fact that 0.5 lies above 0 and 0.5 lies below 0, I can work out any probability I need. So be careful with this and make sure you understand how this works. The geometry here is what will help us always sketch the curve out. It will help you. So there are two kinds of problems usually with normal distributions. The first is just simply looking at the table for probability, maybe by doing some scaling first. So here we require probability. The other is where I have a probability, and now I want the value of the normal distribution itself. This is called the inverse problems, and in general, in mathematics, Inverse problems are very much more difficult. Here it's not so bad because we can just look at the tables as we will see. So we'll go through some examples here to see exactly how this works. So well, let's start. The first is I've got a normal not one distribution and now one probability of z is less than one. So the sketch here will simply be this. Here are my axis. Here's my normal not one distribution. And, and this value is the mean, 0, that's 1. I want the probability of lying below 1. So I want everything below 1. Now I know below 0 is 0 0.5. And this part here, I'll be able to get from my tables. So here are my normal distribution tables. It tells you what it's actually going to give you. It will give you the value of the probability between 0 and z, as it indicates in the shaded part here. And the way it looks like here is, the value of z, this thing here, is given in the first column and across the top. So the first the column here gives you the first decimal point, and uh, across the top I get the second decimal point. In this case, I wanted the value of z to be 1, so I'm looking for probability of z less than 1. So I look up 1 in the table. So here is 1, 1 1.0, and I want 0 as well. So I'm looking at this location here. Probability is 0.3413. You'll get more practice with this in your tutes and in the lectures, so you can ask tutors questions if you wish, if you're stuck with this. So again, I'm looking at 1.00, and I want the second decimal place to be also 0. I'm looking at the first column, probably it's 0.3413. And so that means this bit here is 0 0.3413. So probability of z being less than 1 is well, it's a point 0.5 for the first part below 0, and then I add on this point 0.3413, and I get 0 0.8413. And that's basically how simple this is almost always. Next part, probability less than z, probability of z less than negative 1. So if I sketch this out again, as I say, the sketch is very useful in this case, it will help us to work out the geometry of this situation. And I'm looking here at negative 1. That's the bit I want. Now again, I know that essentially, if I use the symmetry straight away, if I go to 1 over there, 
the probability above one is the same as probability below negative one. And I know this is the part the table will give me between zero and one. And that was point three four one three from before. So this part also by symmetry is exactly the same. Zero point three four one three. So the bit I want here, this part, is going to be 0.5 minus this little bit here. So probability of z less than negative 1, the tail probability, 0.5 minus 0.3413. And so that comes to 0 0.1587. So you can see here, I use the symmetry of this situation. And the fact that below 0 is 0 0.5 and, and likewise above 0 is 0 0.5. Probability of z being bigger than 1. Well, this is exactly, in fact, what we've just worked out in the previous example. If you look at this, then I'm looking at a normal 0 to 1 distribution. And I want probability of 0, probability of bigger than 1. That's that part there. The table has given me this as 0 0.3413. So probability of z being bigger than 1 is 0.5 minus that. That's 0 0.1587. And just by the way, you'll notice this is the same as probability of z being less than negative 1 that we worked out in the previous part. And now we get to something else that's a little bit different, 2.51, just to get some more practice looking up tables. So there's 0, there's my normal not 1 distribution, and I'm looking at z less than 2.51. So the first thing is, I know this bit here below 0 is 0.5. And so this is the bit the table will give me, 2.51. So here's my tables. I'm looking at 2.51. So I know that there is 2.5. 2.50, and the 1 comes in the top row, and there's 0 0.1, 0 0.01 there. So this value here corresponds to 2.51. 2.5 from there, and the 0 0.01 from there, 2.51. Second place is across the top. And that's 0 0.4940. So in other words, that probability there is 0 0.49. Zero. So probability of z being less than 0 0.5 is again as before that part added to the below the zero part. So it's 0 0.5 for below zero, and I'm going to add there 0 0.4940. So we get 0 0.9940. So this is exactly how simple this is. In the this initial problems, we're looking at simply the normal not one distribution, and all we need to do is look up the tables in the right way. As another example, z less than 1.96 in absolute value. So for those who aren't sure of this absolute value idea, what that's essentially that means is, let me just get the normal distribution out first. So I'm looking at negative uh, 1.96 here. So there's 1.96, and I want to be less than that. So I'm looking at 0, and I'm going to go this way, 1.96. That's negative 1.96, and that way, 1.96. So essentially, I'm thinking of this as z minus 0. So this absolute value is a distance measurement, distance from z to 0. And I want that distance to be less than 1.96. So from 0 to 1.96 that way, and 1.96 this way. It's less than here, so it's going to be in between. So it's between negative 1.96 to 1.96. So I've got some symmetry here as well as um, the other ideas of the normal distribution. So I'm looking at that now. Of course, the bit between 0 and 1.96 is the same as the bit between 0 and negative 1.96. And this part here, from the tables 1.96, I'll be able to look up. There's 1.9 there, and the point, the point, then a point 0.96, the 6 comes from the second decimal places across the top. 
you can see that's where this is in this column here and so and there is my 1.96.4750 and so because I would symmetry here this probability and z in absolute value is less than 1.96 is simply two times this 0 0.4750 and that comes to 0 0.95 that's a very important number this one here will be seeing often this 1.96 last part here the value of z says that probability of z less than small z is 0 0.9505 so this is part of the inverse problem where I now have the probability and I want the z value. The first thing to notice is that below 0 is 0 0.5 and this probability here is above 0 0.5 so my value z must be on this side somewhere. Since that's 0 0.5 the remaining bit here is 0 0.4505 so the sum here comes to 0 0.9505 and so what I'm going to do is look up the table, but this time I'm looking at probability. I want the probability to be 0 0.4505. So I look at the tables, 0 0.4505, and I'm finding it, there it is. And the value of z it corresponds to is 1.6 from here, and 5, is 1.65. And there's an answer for the part. Not so difficult after all. And the last part, I think, here, last couple of parts here is I want the value of z, so that probability of absolute value of z being less than z is 0.95. Now, in fact, I've almost done this part before. But again, I'm looking at here because I'm looking at absolute values. That means, as I said before, it's the distance from, from z to 0. The absolute value must be less than z. So I'm going to go with z this side and z this side makes it negative z and I'm less than so I'll be in the middle here and that probably is 0 0.95 well 0 0.95 divided by 2 because I'm looking at this in halves divided by 2 is 0 0.4750 so because of the symmetry here half the probability is on this side 0 0.4750 and the other half is on this side. And so if I look at the tables for the probability of 0.4750, I'll get the z value. So 0 0.4750 is there, and that's my 1.96 that I had worked out earlier. So that means that value of z is 1.96. While we're with this part here, notice that writing something like z less than 1 and z less than equal to 1 is exactly the same. This is a continuous distribution, so between these two, all I'm doing is adding the extra point 1, and a single point has probability 0, because I'm looking at the area under a single point that will be 0. So these two are the same thing, so usually you'll find we'll just write z less than instead of equal, less than equal to, but even if you do write less than equal to, it's the same thing. And lastly, we'll do one that's slightly different. We want both parts here, they don't look the same, so this is a normal auto distribution. And I want probability between 2.7 and negative 1.5. So essentially, I look up the table in two halves. 2.7, if I look up, gives me that probability there. So I go to 2.7, and there's 2.7, that's 0.4965. And the negative 1.5 makes no difference because, of course, I know if I flip it to the other side and get 1.5, I'll get the same probability. So I'll look at 1.5 here, and that's 0.4332. So this probability here that I'm after is 0.4965. Plus 0 0.4332. That gives me 7 there, 9 there, 12 there, 9 there. So there's my answer for that part. 
now they get into some non-standard distributions. So now I've got Z isn't again no 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 longer normal node one in some of the distribution, and we'll see that in the next part of the lecture.